So you know in those doomsday movies where there's some scary, super evil, special virus that's killing off everybody and the world has to come together in order to save humanity and there's a small group of people who are immune and deep down inside we'd all love to believe that we're that special person. I am not that special person. I am going to be the person that catches it first and then dies gruesomely before there's even a thought of a vaccine. And none of this has anything to do with today's topic, but if you can't hear it, I'm nasally because I'm sick and dying again. Ah! Hello everyone, I'm Catherine Decina Sapolin, and today we're talking about stereotypes and perception. And for today's video, I'm going to be focusing on America, since if you don't know, hi, welcome to the channel. I'm American and I know America the best. And I'll be focusing also on France because I lived there for 10 years and I know France the second best. Stereotypes are a very interesting phenomenon in my opinion because we all have stereotypes, but they change depending on where you go. But what's really funny is that you have a group of people who seem to be up on their high horse and don't realize that like negative feelings are normally reciprocated. So if you have negative feelings to a certain nationality or group of people, those people normally aren't sitting at home thinking, you know who's doing life right? Those people over there. No, they normally have negative crap to say about you. And that's what makes stereotypes so so funny. I really, I love stereotypes, which is probably why I've done a few videos on stereotypes and cultural differences, because they're great. Today though, I wanted to talk about how to deal with stereotypes and sort of how to get out of that mindset of taking stereotypes at face value. Because personally, from my experience, I would say stereotypes typically are true, but it's because of perspective and how we see the world and depending where you grew up and how your culture works, you're going to look and judge things differently than people from other cultures. So here's a really great example. In France, Americans don't really have the best reputation. You know, we're sort of known as being arrogant, stupid, and consumeristic. And you know what, from an outside perspective, that's all true. I totally get what people are saying and where they're coming from, and I don't take it as an insult, though I do know that sometimes when people say that crap to me, they mean it as an insult, and it's the greatest troll ever when you don't get insulted by things that are supposed to be insulting because then the person who says them gets really, really bad and it's fun. I'm a troll that way. And I want to say, this isn't something I learned out of the gate. This is something that I sort of learned as I lived in France, because most people really don't seem to have the perception that they are on a high horse and looking down and being judgmental towards other people. And when you can get down off of your high horse, and recognize that the way you do things isn't the right way, it's just a different way, then you open your mind and the world is such a wonderful, beautiful, awesome place. But like some people just, they, they sort of seem to be stuck or I don't know, they don't want to come down with us peasants. I don't know what's going on. Those people are the most fun people to troll because I've, I've started stuff with some French people because, like, I don't know, I've met so many French people, and I know I'm doing this as a generalization, not all French people are like this. There is this negative perception in America that the French are rude, lazy, and have no work ethic. And, like, I hate to say, but from an American perspective, that's all true. But having lived in France, I know that it's not, but I could understand why somebody who's never been in France, who doesn't know the culture, would make those observations. And that's what makes stereotypes to me just so funny. Because we choose to take observations from other people when they're negative and take them to heart instead of just taking them as 
a critique on our way of life. And I don't know why we do that. And I'm guilty of this myself. Because when somebody says that Americans are consumeristic, in the beginning, it was really hurtful. And I don't know why, because it's something that's true. Americans, objectively, are more consumeristic than people in Europe. But why am I offended by that? I don't know. I really, for the life of me, I do not know why when I first moved to France, that was annoying to me. Except that when people were saying it, it really wasn't an observation. It wasn't a critique. It was a judgment. And I feel like when people talk to other people about their culture, even if we're offering something as a critique, it comes off as a judgment. And I wish that wasn't the way of the world because the best conversations that I've ever had have been with my French friends where we could talk about our perspective cultures and what we thought of the other without having to really worry about offending people. And that doesn't happen that often in my opinion. Like culture is something that's like ingrained in our heart and I think it's difficult for people to hear anything negatively because they will as a knee jerk want to defend and it's this weird thing I'm not judging I'm just making an observation of something that's different you don't need to defend it to me but if you could explain what the reasoning is or if there's like a historical significance like that would be interesting because that would be something that I wouldn't know because I wouldn't grow up with it and I just I really wish more people could look at it that way but that that would mean like the world is utopia and that's probably not going to happen so the best that I can do is sort of like troll people. Oh, my nose stopped working. Ugh, stupid nose. Being able to breathe through your nose when you're talking is important. And to my American viewers, one of the easiest and most effective ways to troll somebody outside of the US is to say that you don't know how the metric system works. I don't know why, but people are like uber sensitive about that. And what's What's sort of funny is that we learn both in America. I actually know how the metric system works, but like Europeans, you guys really don't know my system, but I'm the awful, awful person. I hate to say, but like when it comes to stereotypes and the whole judgmental negative aspect of it, the best remedy that I found is to just not let it get to me and to sort of troll the people who are trying to get me down. It probably makes me a horrible person doing that, but what can you do? Turn it around or go home and cry. Or you know, you can do both, whatever. I have a whole bunch of questions for you guys. Namely, one, what are your favorite stereotypes about your country? Two, what are your favorite stereotypes about other countries? Three, are there any stereotypes that you think really don't apply? And four, what's the craziest stereotype that you can come up with? It doesn't have to be real, it can be, but hey, leave me some surprises. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, strangers on the internet, your mom, your grandma, because those are the people you should share it with because they'll share it with everyone. Hit the red button to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and hey, it might even work, but if it doesn't, be sure to come back Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays because that's when I release my new videos. All my social links have been left in the description below. For your convenience, I dare you to stalk me. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, and I write a blog where I continue the conversation, so check that out. And if you'd like to help support the channel, consider using my Amazon affiliate link. That's what I have for you guys today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Tote scenes, me apple scenes. Given the option of surviving a catastrophe on a world level, or just dying and not having to deal with the aftermath, what would you choose? Because I'm perfectly okay dying from the virus and having to rebuild society, because that would be so much work. And right now I'm sick and tired.